welcome. I am so happy that you are here to paint with me. I by accident um, started my process of transferring my Liberty Bell template. So I'm just going to show you what to do. You definitely want to do the back <clears throat> of your printed out on from your computer. All right. And then I like to type it down. Make sure it's in the middle. And then you want to trace. Sometimes a mechanical pencil doesn't get dull quickly, so it's it could be a little easier to trace. But you decide which one you want to do. And then you just want to trace all the lines. No need to stress about making it so perfect. We are going to paint it in. You just want to get the basic outlines down. Oh, I realized I didn't even draw this. So maybe just add the same here. And you just want to go ahead and trace most of the lines. I do like to tape it down so before you lift it completely, you can see that you can see your lines. So do remember to tape it down. The red rose is the national flower of the USA, uh, which I thought would be nice to combine. And let's see. Oh, I need to do the stem. Luckily, the stem is a stem, so it doesn't have to be so perfect. I also need to do this side. This line. And then when you feel happy, take it off. Um, let me just see. I'm going to make a few lines a tiny bit darker. You don't need to do this. I basically want to do this so you can follow along. If you see some of your lines are a little bit crooked, you may just, you know, want to change them. But no need to make your lines darker. And this is it. Okay, so we are going to start painting. There's going to be quite a few layers. And just move everything away. There's going to be quite a few layers of the 
um, on the actual bowel. So I am using a brush that is half the size of my pinky now. So even a little smaller, if you can, it needs to make a nice point when it's wet. That's what you want to look for. And then as we go along, you may switch up and change the colors any way you want. I would suggest the bell kind of shouldn't stay like the yellowy, but um, if you don't like the red rose, then make a different one. So it's definitely up to you. I'm going to try to place them, but then I'm also going to zoom in. Um, so you have a nice close up. And just oops, adjust my camera. Okay. First things first. I have <clears throat> a little strip that I can show you how to mix color on. I have a warm sunshine yellow that when I use it with a lot of paint, less water, it kind of looks like that. This is not really the color I want to go for. I want to add a tiny bit of black, oh, my black map and some um, blue in it. Oh, not that much, but kind of like this. See how I sort of change the color to more of a, like a dirty kind of yellow. That is the color I want to go for painting my whole um, bow. So you can paint as you as you go, you can mix as you go, or you can try to make a puddle. I don't think it's really necessary to make a puddle. However, you can. And all I wanna do is, I wanna paint my bow. I am mixing as I go. It is okay to get kind of sort of different color because it is outside. No, I'm not, I cannot remember if it's outside, outside really, but it used to be. I visited the Liberty Bow. I cannot remember when, 2015 or 14 or I don't know. Um, and I'm painting, oh, see, too much yellow. All I do is I make it wet, get a bit of black. And blend it in. Blend, blend, blend. Notice I don't really touch my black paint. I kind of use the paint that's next to it. So I know my color isn't that strong. And then you just kind of want to, you know, let it dry. That is a great, great first layer. Then I'm going to jump to paint the wood piece it's hanging from. Um, I have the brown... I think it's the Van Dyke brown that looks like this. Um, if you add some orange or a reddish brown, you can kind of mix a really pretty brown. It doesn't really matter. You decide what brown you want to use. And you just want to paint it. Now, for this one, if you paint... You know, you do outline, pointing your brush, making sure it looks pretty, pretty straight. Ooh, sometimes you have to make it just a little bit bigger to get that line straight. But if you even mix a bit more brown to it and let it, and then come and paint from the other side, so it kind of mix it in, but it's not just the same color, it gives a really nice texture. So that's something you want to keep in mind. You just don't want to just paint up and down or side to side. Maybe come and do a few 
touches like this. And see the nice texture it will give when it dries. I'm going to quickly go to the other side, well, the middle. And I just grab a little bit of paint. I always like to start my coloring really light and then building up and creating more texture as I go. I see I didn't trace so well, so I'm just going to paint it in. While it is still wet, look what happens if you just kind of drop in color. And from becoming just one solid color, it will dry. Interesting. I'm going to move on to this side. Your first layer may not look exactly like you want it, but it's a great foundation for what is to come. Paint always dry a little lighter than you think. So even if it feels like the one side is not matching the other side, just wait for it to dry so you can actually see uh, because sometimes it just always looks a little different when it is wet. Okay, so I'm just painting maybe tap, 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 tap. I'm going to see how that dries. <clears throat> Yeah, then I am going to use the black yellow kind of idea and maybe a bit of brown. So let me see the black yellow idea, a bit of brown, maybe more black. And by and the black should be actually lots of water. To get to a color that is a bit more browner than our bow color. And so black, yellow, brown. And I'm going to paint these, um, I don't know really what it's called, the stand. I make sure that I put my hand down so I have a lot of control on my paintbrush. So my arm is down over here. The first layer again will maybe probably just be one color. We will come back and add to it. This one is a little wet. So it's going to be drying interestingly. Do control the water on your brush a little bit more than you think because you don't want it to be so oops, hard to paint. It's a lot of black. Oops. And then I just let it end uneven. You know, I just kind of flick it out. In your brush, you can touch your toe. If you have a line, you can just kind of try to blend it in more. I'm going to use that same color, maybe make it a bit more grayish. This should be dry, those three pieces. You don't want that to be wet. And I'm going to paint the sides at the bottom. That is kind of holding this together. This looks like an owl shape. This looks like a big rectangle. If it feels like your colors are too much the same, 
just make it a bit darker. Like I can tell that this is a bit darker. Or I can make it a bit darker. And paint the reverse out. Paint the these holding thingies. Paint the thingy at the top. Uh, paint the thing that holds everything together. Kind of looks like two eyes. I left the open insides, but you can paint it if you want to. Because I'm not using too much uh, water on my brush, it's easy for me to do this. I can zoom in a little bit more. Let me just see. I can also do this long one in the middle. And this one is definitely touching my bell. Okay, so this is all with like a lighter gray. More black, so less water, more paint. And you can add the squares on the top. That's probably like little screw things. I'm going to say it doesn't really matter how many you make. I see I have one on that side, which I don't even see on my template, but I'm just going to add a little small one because I went outside of the line when I was painting it. Even though it looks super black, you it dries always lighter. So just, just paint it and then we'll see what it looks like. So now again, I'm going to just add a small one here. This Now, it looks super weird because some of the ones are really black and it just stands out. I'm giving some of them just a little line to break up the black box. You can go in the middle, you can go to the bottom, doesn't really matter. It's not, we are not done. It looks weird, so don't worry about it. I'm going to take this black color and, and I'm outlining this open circle. I'm going to leave, so it's really going to look like eyes. I'm going to leave a little bit of a white space. And I'm going to do the mouth, which looks like a mouth to me now that I see this face. And now that I say this, we will not be able to unsee this little face we are painting. Because it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can see it. So paint the eyes, paint the mouth. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to put my hand down like this. And towards my body, I'm just going to drag a very skinny kind of broken line down. And if I can give you just a zoom in. And you don't even have to frame it perfectly. Maybe just a little bit like that. And then at the top, this little section we traced, and I'm just also going to make kind of outline-ish, a few lines inside, just something. 
I'm also going to take the brush and go to the sides of these thingies. Forgive me for not knowing what we're painting. And I'm outlining again. You can also make it a bit skinnier if you were too big. Do make sure that you put your hand down and only use the tip of your paintbrush to get those sketchy kind of lines. I'm also going to touch my, my black one more time. And I want to kind of make this, this gray. Um, I'm going to give it some shadows. So I'm going to kind of outline it like this. Clean my brush, touch my towel. Towel is like right here, touch it. And then just use your, your the tip of your brush and tap, tap, tap around it. And you will see how you can easily blend it. Do the same on this side. Kind of sort of giving him an outline, clean your brush, touch your towel, blend it out. And even just use a little bit more gray and kind of add some texture if it's just one gray color. Even at the top, You can just add a little bit. If I can show you. So instead of just having it now a light gray, I kind of added something. Okay, now we're gonna do the black again. Same, same seas. And we are making a line here, the bottom, making a line here. And then make a little bolt. I'm going to call it the bolt. Here, but if you do on the one side, you do on the other side. If your light gray that we did again is the same, you know, too light, we're just going to come back and we're going to add some shadows. But before we do that, maybe if this, if this turned out to be a bit light, you can just drag those little lines and then tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 kind of messing it up a bit. So it's just not one color. And if I can give you a zoom in. Nope, it's not your eyes. Well. Okay, and then, oh, there. See how I just kind of sort of messed it up a little bit so it's not just a light gray. Okay, moving on to these black again, these poles. I am pointing my brush, kind of outlining. Kind of smooshing it in. It can be a bit of a broken line. We want to have dark towards the edges and light in the middle to show that they are round. So I'm doing this side and then I'm doing I'm doing the left hand side. And the only reason I'm doing it this way is so I can point my brush to that easily. You do not want to use too much black. You want to make sure that it's light. I say that and then look what I'm doing. Too much black. If that happens, suck it up with your toe. You don't need to wash it. And then you can just kind of move it. Then you can clean. Make sure you take off the water. And blend it out by pushing it back. 
For the next part, I have to turn mine around because it's a little easier for my hand to point towards my left hand side because I'm right. And I will do the same thing. I'm going to push, push, push the side. Doing the same on this side. Went in my brush. Cleaning my towel. Cleaning my brush, touching my towel to suck up that drop. And then I kind of just smush it up. Yeah. So what I kind of want to see is dark towards the side. In the middle, it should be lighter. Something like this. Also, we have to wait for everything to dry and for all the pieces to come together to see if we actually like what we see. I know um, even me, look at me, fussing, fussing, fussing. But sometimes we just have to let it dry and do all the parts and then come back and, and see what we can add. My wood does look a little too splotchy and not really um it's not strong enough so I want to make it darker I'm going to come with my brown and I'm adding some blue to it I have a nice big kind of weird puddle up here so a blue and brown a darker blue so don't take a light blue a darker blue it looks something like this. That is very pretty. And if you even add a small amount of purple to it, it makes it a bit warmer. So what I'm going to do with that one is, I'm going to see if I can paint some of the, the wood texture. Okay, so I mix my nice big puddle. Just make sure I have enough paint on my brush. At the bottom, I want to make it a bit dark. And then I kind of want to paint side to side. Side to side, a little bit here. At the bottom of this curve, it should be darker. I can squash my brush down and kind of drag it along. even revisit this first one I did and kind of get a nicer texture, but a bit darker. <clears throat> I can tap, tap, tap to drop in color. If you have a different brown, it doesn't really matter. The idea is the same. So your first layer is giving you the highlights, which is great. And then you want to come back and I just touched too much purple, so now mine looks a little bit weird. And then you want to come back and you want to add your shadows on top. So you don't really want to lose your first color. You kind of just want to come back and add a bit more texture. So even if you just go like this. Going here to the bottom. Clean your brush, touch your towel, and you can blend it in. And by blending in, I mean make the just touch it because you can make it a bit softer and a bit more well blended. While it's wet, you can always drop in color and see how pretty it will flow.
Mine is a bit wet, so it looks darker than it really is. I will see if I can lift it up now to give you a more accurate Um, oh, that's pretty. Okay. And make it wet. Touch up, touch up, touch <clears throat> Now we want to go into our bow. So this should be completely dry. Again, with the black base, maybe add some blue to your base, like, like a dark blue. Something like this. So it's got like a hint of blue. And you want to point your brush to this outside line. Make sure you go all the way to your white paper. I'm going to go to that first line. I'm cleaning my brush. I'm pulling it out. So I'm going to go I'm over one, two pencil lines, and then I'm going to stop. And I'm dragging it out. Now, remember, we can always come back and make more dark. But if it's so dark that we cannot see the yellow, it's a little hard to come back. So even if this dries light and it pushes all your paint to the side, it's okay. You can drop in more color like this. I'm going to paint all the way to this pencil line. And then leave like a small section and paint to the pencil line that's right there. Ooh. Thank you. Cleaning my brush again. Drag it over to kind of give it a blend. And a blend from this side. And wiggle my brush to the edge to also blend it out. Come from this side. Maybe it's easier for you to turn it like this and then just point your brush because for me it is. Do that pencil line. And from that pencil line at the bottom, and you just want to leave like a tiny line. So when you come back and you smooch it out, you have enough room to blend it. And then I'm going to come from this side. I'm going to get my paint. I'm just get my paint. Get in your brush. Make sure you touch your towel so you don't make it too wet. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I'm clean and touch and we go, we go, we go. While it's wet, you can drop in paint. Tap, 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 and see what it looks like. For me, again, when I turn it like this and I point my brush towards the bottom or the side, you know, the left side, I can drag my brush much nicer. And I blend it in. You don't want to lose the yellow everywhere. You do want to see the yellow because it gives the idea of the, the coppery um, clock about. 
And then I'm going to do skip one at the top, paint from the side. Leave a little open. Just paint side to side. Now, it's very important to not have your brush too wet. If your brush is too wet, you may lose all your open bits. So try not to have your brush too wet. It is okay if some of them kind of blended in. So this is more or less what I see. It's also okay if you see a few harsh lines like this, because all we can do is we just clean our brushes, touch our towels, and you just come back and you just use little circles and you can kind of blend them out. However, the bow is definitely in need of one more layer. So let's lift it up and see, is it shiny? Can you paint it? If it's shiny, you cannot paint. I can paint. I have to mix more paint, so I'm going to use again the black with a bit of the blue. You can even use a one head of purple to make your mixture pretty. And I'm repeating the same steps. So I'm pointing my brush over here and then I kind of feather it out. I over here when I come back and do a little thingy. And I'm gonna do a little one here. And now it will be easier to, to bolt the layers. However, you have to wait for the layers to be dry or else you're not gonna be able to blend it. Or it's um, you're not gonna be able to layer it because it will just blend. Okay. But before it gets dry, go back, clean your brush, touch your towel. And blend it out. The way it dries makes the pretty texture. So that's kind of what you want to go for. Turn, turn, turn. For me, it's always easy if I can turn it. Be careful not to overwork it so you don't lift color everywhere. You may even have to just do a little line. Maybe this line can be get, getting a bit smaller. With all your layering you are doing, you can kind of play around. When the lines dry a bit harder, just use a tiny circle. And go circle, circle. Make sure your bow is matching the top. So side to side to side. Okay, what if you pulled out a little too much of your yellow? I suggest you bring some yellow back. So you can just kind of, oh, that's a little orangey. 
put a drop and then just use water and kind of tap, 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 tap it. And then let it dry or maybe tap in some black again. It looks a bit unfinished because uh, it's just not done. Then, and I apologize if you can hear my dog. Then I want to come back and do this bottom section black. Now, be careful if your bow is very wet, then you cannot really paint where it's touching because it will flow into it. I know mine is not wet there, so I can definitely paint. And you just want to paint all these little details black. Check your thingies at the top, make sure that they kind of, you know, make shadowy things standing out. Yeah, don't do any of the lines yet. It needs to be completely dry and we need to be completely happy with it. Check your, um, this top bar, maybe it also needs a darker line at the bottom. Whenever you see a color that's that's just, you know, one color, maybe you just need to kind of do a little tap, tap, tap or something to just get, you know, so it's not, so there's more texture, I want to say. Reflections, even if it's a metal surface that's smooth, there will be some reflections. Okay, let's go into our rows. If you're red, and pick it up looks like this and you love it then paint with it if you feel you want to add a bit of orange to your red to give it more of a, a warmer red this one tends sometimes to me to be a little pinkish this one is the one i like better but whatever you feel like make a puddle of red Make a puddle of red and paint your rose. I still like to stay in the shapes, more or less. It's not very dark to begin with. Kind of a medium color. I paint and skip and paint and skip to make sure that when it's wet and wet, it doesn't flow into each other. I do make sure to stay inside my lines. If I paint and I feel I have too much water on my brush, I simply just touch my towel and then continue painting. I don't go to water. I don't go to the paint again. I just give a little tap so you can see my line is there and I continue painting. Doing it this way can also be a little confusing. Um, it will definitely look like a rose. So even if you, you know, 
miss it for you or do something, something. I guess. Oh, I didn't play so well here at the top. Hmm. Bang, bang, bang. Make sure you don't see a lot of white spaces in between. And you kind of want to see the different sections. It just makes the next, you know, the blend, the shadow board a bit easier. If you can see. So I like to paint it section by section because then you can see how it dries. The other method is to just paint everything one color then come back and add the shadows in. This, the, both of them are easy. I use both methods. Um, so whatever you feel is easier. I kind of just like um, to see how the different sections dry and then I can just come back and add Even if the section stones make it does not make sense now, don't worry about it. It will make sense. Like over here, you are not really sure what you're doing, but don't worry. And then this is the last one. I'm going to make sure that it dries. Okay. Kind of even looks good like it is. We just have to come back and make some areas darker. Okay. Let's go into the stem. Get some green. I like to mix the grass green with olive green. And put my brush down and drag towards my body. Remember, you can erase your pencil lines. Oh, sorry. You can erase your, erase your pencil lines. So put it down and drag it one time, maybe two times. For now, that is good. Then make sure you put your hand down so your stems stay skinny and then paint your leaves a light green of your choice. I kind of like to paint a bit stripey. There is a line in the middle. It will be easy to do. Um, you know, you can add lines and, and details if you want to, or you can just kind of wing it a little bit like this with a darker color. So make your green darker by adding maybe some blue or just more green. And then just kind of paint a little bit on top. You can definitely make, and it's going to be wetter, it's going to be all flowy. And that will be a, a very cool first layer. So look at that. It's just one, oh, you can't even really see it. Well, yeah, you can. It's like one light green, and then you just come back and it will flow. And it's not that super dark, but it's just something. So it's not just one color. And then I'm going to come back and do more over here. So the same idea. Paint a light green. I like to paint with leaving some 
white spaces sometimes i keep them and sometimes oops i make my leaves bigger like i just did now sometimes i keep them and sometimes they disappear just look at your bow and see how pretty it's already drying there you go This one, I'm going to make a little bit darker, like this, a skinny line for stems. Oh, wait, it goes all the way to the lead, to the stem. <clears throat> if you cannot see the difference, the leaf is going to be the dark one because it's on the back. So if it feels like your stem and your leaf is very similar in color, don't worry, we are going to change it. Make lighter with your color. So add water and then paint these things. There is one, two, there's like a baby. One, two, three. This one goes into your leaf. So if your leaf is wet, be careful, don't paint it. And then this one. Now, you need to be able to see the difference. So if you look up now, you can see that you cannot always see the all the definitions. So I'm going to have to make sure that I can come back and do that. Now is a very good time to, let me just zoom out so you can see the whole thing, is to hold it up. And squint your eyes a little bit to see what is needed. I love how my wood at the top looks. I love how my bow. And look at the difference. It's not even the same. But I'm not done with the bow. So I know if I add the crack and if I add like those detailed lines, I'm going to change the look completely. So what I like is I kind of like how my black is blended and, and drying. I like my wood, I think I like my rose, I like the color, I know I can just come back and add more. And my first layer of my green looks good too. So now, you wanna come back and detail. So the first layers are always light and you just get the color in there. And now the fun comes when we wanna do um, more blending and shadows. I know I want to make this leaf dark because I'm going to start at the top and then work my way down. Then I'm going to start from the outside and I'm going to do lines towards the middle. I'm going to do a darker, like a navy blue. And while it's still wet, I'm just dropping in a little bit like this. I leave like an open space there, but now, so I just got rid of some of the paint on my brush. And I can do maybe a bit of a line there. And maybe flick it away. So for me, instead of using the line from the beginning in the middle, I try to go from the outsides and then move my way in. Bring my brush. Drag it out. Coming from the outside in, and then I can just use water and I can 
Fluffy Fluff it in. Maybe use a little bit of a navy blue. Maybe not that much. Clean your brush, touch your towel. So whenever you come back with the shadowing board, you definitely want to have a little bit less water so you can control more what's happening. The first layer, we don't really care. It's fine if we kind of just blend. The second one, you want to maybe have some of the, the shadows stay where you put them. So you don't just want it to go all over the place. I don't know if that makes sense, but control a little bit the water more when you come back. So I'm coming from the outside. Adding a little bit of more. Leaving some open space. So I want to give you a close up so you can see. Oh, I can pick it up before I start to smoosh it in. See how it looks very sketchy. And then I come back with only a clean brush and I can kind of, well, now it's a bit dry, but you can do it. <clears throat> same here so we did it in the beginning on this one but it was a bit too wet and it just kind of flow so come back with your second oh this will be like the third layer Clean your brush, touch your towel, smoosh it in a bit. Now, sometimes roses' stems are a bit more browner than they are green. So add a small amount of brown to your existing green. And just, I'm going to hold my brush a little bit more to the back. I'm going to put my hand down and I'm just going to do a few little swishes like this, especially from the bottom. Going up again now, because we started with this leaf, it should be dry for us to do this one. So this one is behind. So I'm going to make a line. I'm going to make a line. Like a little triangle. See that? And then I'm cleaning my brush, I'm touching my towel, and I'm just going to kind of blend it in. So it looks like the it's behind on the other side, and it's making a shadow. And I'm taking the same color, and I don't fully want to paint the whole thing. I kind of just want to mess up the color a little bit if it's just one color. So you may want to come with your, and it's like a darker green, maybe use blue, maybe use purple, and just do kind of maybe the tippy. Maybe where it's touching the rose. And you want to 
give him some shadow areas, but you don't want to lose the first layer. So they can show you what I've done. I went for where it's touching the rose and I gave him a little line, 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 line. And at the tip I gave because it's bending down. So this part is where the highlight is hitting. I clean my brush. I make sure I touch my towel to suck up the drop. And then with your brush, you can just blend, blend, blend it a little bit in. So don't lose your first color. And again, control the water a lot. It should be so little. Even if you start painting and it gives you that big drop, just touch your towel and try again. You need to control that water by a lot. Okay, so the only thing that is left is the lines and the rows. So let's quickly do the lines while I remember. Because that's the thing. I'm making a black puddle. Black Not too dark, you know, like a medium. You can definitely switch to a smaller brush if you want to. Um, I'm always sticking with the same one. Putting your hand down like this, anchor it so you can only use your fingers. The more you squash down, the more you squash down, the bigger your line is. That is not dark at all. Hold on. The more you put your hand down like this, the, your brush, the thicker. If you can have your brush up in the air and you only touch a little tippy is where you can get a skinnier line. If your brush is too full of water, it's going to even be a, a thicker line. So whenever you mix it, maybe touch and then see how you can make a, a little bit of a skinnier line. Okay, so towards your body, it's for me easier. So I'm going to put it down and I'm going to make my little crack. Be careful not to make it too big, because then it will look a little bit weird. If it's easy to go side to side, you can. If it's easy to go up and down, you can. Make a few lines. Use those yellow spaces as guidelines. Have like a broken line, so you don't have to have to make a solid line. Towards the sides, you can have more line. Towards the middle, it can be a little bit more broken. because that's where the highlight will hit I'm just going to give him like a little side line too because I see I didn't paint around there you can definitely make that too Broken lines are best. Make sure your brush is up in the air. This line is a double line. And then there should be three lines over here. So one, two, under with number two. And then I need to turn it even one more time so I can see this. I want to make sure that I do it all the way at the bottom and make the line nice and flat.
Okay, so something like this. It looks a little bit crooked, but it's okay. Together, it looks pretty. All I did was I made at the bottom here, I made a bit of a triangle shape to just show the crack a bit more. You can also do the crack like and then lift your brush up so it fades even a bit more. So it gets skinnier. Okay. Now let's do the rose. Okay, so whatever color you use for your rose, use that as your base. I just need to mix more of my orange and my red. I'm going to see if I can make a different. I'm going to just do it here. Yeah, so orange, oops, orange, red here. Adding some of the dark Van Dyke brown in here to make a pretty and I So sometimes it's great if you have this um, because then you can kind of see what it looks like. So yes, that to me looks like perfect. So I would just do it on top. I will see if it makes a pretty shadow color. So it's your color that you have and you add some brown, Um, yeah, some brown. Instead of black, that will kind of make it dull. Brown will make it nice and pretty. So the first one you want to do is, is this bottom one. So you point your brush. Make sure you go. Clean it. Touch it. Blend it out. See how light my rose um, actually dried? So we will be able to make all the light areas a, a bit redder. But let's put the shadow in so you can actually see. This one, I cannot zoom in more because then my paintbrush doesn't fit. Okay, so I point my brush here. Perfect. Then this little one to the side, you want to make dark too. Not all the way. Clean your brush, touch your towel, blend it out. So I know these two look like they are blending together. But remember, we can add more layer, but we just have to let it dry in between. So I know I can come back and revisit that one. Then I want to come in here. I want to make a triangle shape around that petal. Looks like a little triangle. I go around. And I go in here to make another triangle. And I flick it out unevenly like this. And I go all the way, clean my brush, touch my towel, clean it out. Make sure you suck up that drop so you don't have too much water on your brush. And remember, we can come back and add more. So I have one, two, three areas that is dark already. This outside line, I'm going to gonna come in here. And towards the outside of my leaf, I am pulling it out. So towards the middle of the petal, the flower, it will be dark, and towards the outside of the petals, it will be lighter. You want to make this triangle shape. A little dark. 
you can make the whole thing basically one color. This petals fold is making it dark enough. Then what I like to do is I want to follow the top of this petal just to make sure all the lines are pretty, kind of like that. So if I can give you a zoom and you just see what I mean, I followed it along. I flip mine kind of to the side because it's a little easier again to just use that. Just get more paint. And I follow this bottom big wide triangle. I paint less than a quarter inch, I want to say. And I'm giving that fold of the petal a tiny outline. So I have the original color space open in the middle. I clean my brush, I touch my towel, and I kind of want to blend it in without losing that spot. If we make it the same dark brown, it's going to blend in with this side and it's not going to work so well. Whenever there's a light area, there should be a dark area. Even if you think yours is too light, let's just do the whole rows and then you can see. I just looked up and it looks like, looks like there's a weird little drop there. Okay. Let's get my paint. Did you make enough paint? I never make enough paint. Okay. Now, remember wherever it's touching, it needs to make a shadow. So the fold over is making a highlight. So this guy needs to have a bit of a shadow. It's very small. So I'm thinking a line like this, and then you just kind of blend it in. This can also be darker. Mine is really dark already. And this can be darker. So find a pencil line. And then Blend it out. So find the pencil line to touch and then just blend it out. That makes sense, I think. And then in the middle, you just want to do. You just kind of want to do a smiley face and then flick it up. Get in your brush and then come back and do a little. Now, if you <clears throat> so this looks a little bit weird. Let me just show you. It looks like a big giant circle with a little circle inside. To fix that, oh, there. It looks like a big C shape or a circle with a little thing inside. To fix that and to get the idea of the petals that are um, still like overlapping, I'm just gonna give him a little line that breaks those two apart. So now it looks like a fold. Or oh, two two different petals actually it looks like um one is in this one on the right hand side left hand side is on top of the other one. I'm just gonna do this, and now it looks a little bit better. Okay, <clears throat> check your red. Is it too light? Because guess what, you can always paint again and again and again. 
So I don't like how my red faded or dried so light when I painted it. Even though I love the light color, I can now come back and give a little wash over the whole thing to make sure that it looks like a really red flower, not just like a not so red flower. And I am doing separate. You always want to paint separate, not just go over it. I'm painting my highlight sections first. Because sometimes that is the problem. Either highlights are too light. So I'm doing those first and see what it looks like. And then I can come back and I can do all the areas. So I know I want to do this one too. And by just quickly painting over it, you cannot really, you don't really change the color, you just add more. I'm getting some dark color. Remember how on this side, I know I want to do this stand out a bit more. Now I can do it. I can also come back and add more, whatever you want to do. So by doing the highlight sections first, you can actually see, because sometimes what happened, or to me what happened is my, um, my shadow areas, because the first layer always dries a bit lighter, my shadow areas can make everything, there's such a big contrast that it looks so weird. So if I just come back and add a bit more color to my highlight areas, then immediately it doesn't look so weird. So that's why I kind of like to start with those. To make some of your areas stand out a little bit more, you can take the shadow area and you can just, again, not everywhere, but you can come and smooth out and give like a, a kind of an outline. However, very skinny, up in the air, only here and there, Don't to, you don't need to do everywhere. And you can kind of smooth out some lines. And for the next part, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. I am going to take my towel and I'm crumpling it up like this. And I'm doing some blues and blacks. Maybe some browns. And I'm going to start. You can splatter by holding it close and then just tap it. You can also use a pencil to chip tap, which I don't want to touch on. I have a mix of paintbrush. It needs to be watery so it can actually get off your paintbrush. You may have to get paint everywhere and clean it up. You can definitely, don't you, you don't have to use it. If you see splatter, instead of wiping it to make lines, just take a towel and suck it up. Let me show you what happens if you splatter and you wipe. You, oh, wow, my color is really light, so hold on. 
say you splat it like that and you wipe it, it makes a line. If you suck it, nobody knows. If you wipe it, it can make lines. So don't do that. And there you go.